and uh, looking forward to a great time of worshiping the Lord together. It's been a long time. It's been too long. And uh, I'm realizing something right now. These cars respond about like those empty chairs do. And uh, <laughs> we're glad you're here. I want us to pray together tonight. Could we just agree and ask God to meet with us in this place that the glory of God would yes. fill this parking lot, that God would show up in a mighty way. Let's pray together right now. Father, we love you. Oh God, I thank you, Lord, that we're able to come together. Oh God, that your presence is here tonight. And God, I'm asking that you will have your way, Father. Lord, those that are watching, those that are listening, those that are seated in their cars tonight, God, I'm believing that the power of the Holy Ghost will flood this hillside. Oh God, that you'll work as only you're able, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Again, it's good to see you here. I appreciate you showing up tonight. Let's enter in right there where you're seated. Let's enter in. Let's exalt the King of kings and Lord of lords together this evening.
all of creation sings. It's, it's great just to be out here outside of the walls, still lifting up the name of Jesus wherever we're at. Praise God. He's worthy of all of our praise, not just at Easter time, but every day of the year. Amen. Praise God. How many are ready for a new move of God? Ready to see God move in a greater capacity?
wherever you are right now, sitting in your vehicle, or if you're listening from home, hallelujah, can we just raise a hand to him tonight? Can we just let him know that he is still glorified? Hallelujah, Lord, we praise you, we thank you. Hallelujah, God. We thank you that your name is still above every name. How great you are.
goodness. Hallelujah.
that I feel tonight. We may be sitting in our cars on the outside, but on the inside, there's a touch of God. There's a power of God. There's a presence of God that will sustain us. And there's no sickness. There's no disease. There's no infirmity. There's no pandemic that is a match to the power of the God that we serve. He's alive tonight. I said he's alive tonight. And he's worthy. He's worthy of praise and honor and glory. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to pray with me tonight. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to ask God to work. We're going to believe God to do what doctors can't, what, what presidents can't do, what those in authority can't do. We have a higher authority tonight, and we serve a God that's able to work. I want you to pray, first of all, with me for the church. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and 14, verse 14, If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways that I will hear from heaven friends those that are watching and driving by those that are here in the parking lot we need what a president what no leader can do we need a touch and a move of an almighty God I said we need God to show up America needs God this world is ripe for revival. I said this world is ripe for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I want you to pray with me tonight. Let's join together in prayer and believe God to move in this land. Father, oh God, we humble ourselves before you tonight. Oh God, we need you. We need you tonight, God. We acknowledge that we can't fix this problem by ourselves. And God, we're crying out to you, Lord. And I believe in you, God, for healing in this land. We believe in you, Lord, for another awakening. Oh, God, an awakening across this country. Oh, God, an awakening for our city. God, we pray over McAllister. Oh, God, I believe in, Father, that you're going to work. I'm asking you, God, for a move from heaven. God, I lift up every pastor in our city. Oh, God, I lift up every believer in this city. Oh, God, let them be a stirring inside of us. Oh God, let us understand tonight that our need is for you. Oh God, I pray over every car. Oh God, the drivers, people that are driving past this, this church house tonight, I believe in God that they will sense your presence, that they will sense your power. Oh God, we believe in you to work. We believe in you to move tonight. Oh God, work as only you can. Work as only you can. Sin healing, sin renewing, God. I'm asking, Lord, that you will reach into the living rooms, God, of those that are watching by Facebook, those that are listening by radio. Oh, God, bring healing, physical healing, spiritual healing. Oh, God, we come against every power. We come against every force of fear that would come against your people. Oh, God, we trust you tonight, God. You are the great physician and you're our help. Our hope, our confidence is in you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. One more time, can we give God praise? Can we give him praise tonight? Oh, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're alive. I thank you, God, that you're working tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you again to each one that has come out tonight. Thank you for joining with us. Remember what I said a while ago. We may be, we may be sitting in our cars on the outside, but inside, I'm running around the church right now. <laughs> Amen. I, I feel the same presence of God out here as we can feel in there. I encourage you over the next few minutes, just let God speak to your heart. Let God touch you. Again, thank you so much for joining with us. Thank you for coming out here. Man, I can't think of a better way to spend Good Friday afternoon than in the presence of God in the parking lot.
Amen. I can't think of a better way. We're trying to do everything that we can to comply with what they've asked us to do. And this thing, we're praying against it. We're, we're, we're believing God that He's working and we're, we're abiding by all the standards that they've set for us. And, and uh, I, again, I can't think of a better way to celebrate Good Friday than to join together how we can and we can come together. I thank God for a governor that's a Christian. Hallelujah. Thank God for Governor Stitt. And uh, I talked to our mayor yesterday. And he said the, 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 the governor of the state has said it's okay and we're going to go with what he says. Amen. We can come together and we can meet just like we are meeting tonight. Let me say this. We had several that, that mentioned that you, that you had your tithe or your offerings that you had brought. Max, where are you? Max is over there. Is he drinking coffee in the foyer? No, he's over there in the car. He's right over here. And uh, <laughs> Max will, will accommodate you. Uh, he will, uh, uh, he'll have an offering basket at the end of the service. Maybe we'll all exit out that way if you brought, if you brought offerings uh, uh, to give. And uh, again, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you so much for, for taking time and, uh, and worshiping with us. Didn't I, wasn't it good to hear our praise and worship team tonight? Amen. I hear some claps. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yes. <laughs> yes, I was appreciate appreciate the Tucker sister Dorian and the others that help out in that area. I want us to pray right now. Could we ask God just to speak to us from his word? Father, I thank you again that we're able to be here. I thank you for your presence that is with us tonight. I thank you, Lord, that you are faithful. Oh, God, that you're an ever-present help in the time of trouble. And God, right now, I'm believing again that you're going to work in our land. I'm believing, God, that you're going to work on this parking lot tonight. I'm asking, God, that you will speak to our hearts. Oh, God, let our hearts be open and receptive. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read some familiar scriptures to you tonight. Please listen closely. The Bible says in John chapter 3, in verse 16, Possibly the first scripture that you ever memorized. Listen to what it says. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God didn't send His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. The message that we proclaim tonight is that Jesus Christ is the answer. He's not one of many answers. He's not one of a list. But I've come to tell you that Jesus is the answer. Yeah. Romans chapter 5 and verse 6. It says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Aren't you thankful for that tonight? For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man uh, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. One other verse. It says in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5, it says, But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And by His stripes we are healed. I want to preach a simple message tonight. And I want to, just two words. Don't forget. Don't forget. You see, we have a tendency in times of personal hardship, in times of uncertainty, when, when, when things don't turn out the way we thought they would. You see, I understand that there are people watching tonight. There are people listening tonight who have lost their jobs. There's people listening tonight that, that their future is looking a little different than what they thought it would be. Their livelihood is uncertain. I want to remind you tonight in case we are tempted to forget in our times of struggle that we still have a God in heaven and I will not allow my present crisis to cause me to forget the price Good Friday, we celebrate the fact that Jesus went to a cross and He paid the ultimate price 
so you and I can be whole. You see, it was a week that would forever change the destiny of mankind. This week that we know as Holy Week or the week of His Passion. Think through it with me for just a moment. On Sunday of Holy Week, we refer to it as Palm Sunday. We see Jesus as He enters Jerusalem. His fame, His notoriety, His popularity is at an all-time high. He's just healed blind Bartimaeus. Things seem to be working out. There are people that are paying attention to Him. But the Bible says in Luke 19, 37, it says, And when He was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that he, they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King that comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. The crowds were, were, were shouting Hosanna. They were laying the palm branches on the road. But you see, I'm convinced tonight that as Jesus was riding that donkey into Jerusalem that day, as the hoofs of that donkey clapped on the streets of Jerusalem, I'm convinced that in the back of his mind, he could hear Roman soldiers driving nails into his feet and to his hands. He understood what was going on. He was not sidetracked by the praise and by the attention you see. He understood what his mission was. The Bible says in Mark chapter 10 and verse 45, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. The mood, the excitement, the palm branches, it was short-lived because on Monday, Jesus went to church. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the day when we come back into the church. Can somebody say amen? Amen. I'm looking forward to the day when we pull back into this parking lot and we come back together and worship uh, the Lord in spirit and in truth together. I thank God for radio. I thank God for Facebook and social media, but there is nothing like, I'm more convinced than ever, there's nothing like the saints of God coming together. I said there's nothing like the church of Jesus Christ coming together and worshiping. On Monday, Jesus went to church. And there, the, he began to talk to the religious crowd. He began to talk to them. And he began to tell them that they had turned his house into something that was never intended to be. My prayer is that when we get together in this building again, again, I pray that it's sooner than later, that it will be exactly what God intended for it to be. I've got to tell you, i got to be honest with you, I'm afraid we've taken advantage of some of the the privileges that we got <laughs> I said I'm afraid that we've taken for granted it's been we can go if we want to if we miss today we'll go back next week let me tell you something I never dreamed in my foggiest imagination that we would ever see the day that we would see what we're seeing I'm thankful I'm thankful for the spirit of God that's with us but again I am looking forward to that day when we come back together on Tuesday of Holy Week he was on the Mount of Olives speaking to his disciples about what was to come. It was on Tuesday that Judas began to question what was going on. On Wednesday, scholars believed that he was in Bethany at the home of Lazarus. On Thursday, it was the beginning of Passover. Jesus before sharing what uh, he would refer to and what we would celebrate as the Last Supper. He began to teach his disciples there. He began to teach them about servanthood. If you read the story, the Bible says that he took a towel and he began to begin to wash the feet of his disciples. Pastor, what was he doing? He was leaving an example for you and I. He was teaching us that that's what it means to be a follower of Christ. We're here not to be ministered to, but as Christ, we are here to minister to others. Follow with me. Follow with me, if you will, as he leaves that upper room 
all this day that would affect the destiny of every believer who has ever lived. I want you to see him as he leaves there. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 22 and verse 39, it tells us his disciples followed him to Gethsemane and he went a little further and he fell down and he began to pray. I want to talk to you for just a minute tonight about the prayers that we don't need to forget the prayers that Jesus prayed. He began to pray. The Bible says that he began to sweat as though it were great drops of blood. This first prayer that he prayed, he said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Is everybody still listening to me tonight? He prayed that prayer. It shows his humanity. I believe at that time he was saying it sounded like a good idea. If there's any way we can, we can go past this, let's do it. But friend, he said after that, nevertheless, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. I'm telling you tonight, listen church, there's got to come a place in our life where we pray that prayer of surrender and we say, God, not our plan, not our agenda, not what we want, but Lord, what? You want the next prayer that we see him praying. And he prayed and he said a lot of things. I'm just hitting the high spots tonight. The next prayer as I see him on the cross in Luke 23 and verse number 34. As we fast forward, he's there on the cross. And we hear him pray another prayer. It said, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Listen to me on this Good Friday. Some 2,000 years removed from that special day that changed all the course of history. Let me tell you, if the soldier went to hell, it wasn't because he crucified Jesus. Because Jesus offered forgiveness to him right there. If Pilate went to hell, it wasn't because he put damnation on Christ because he was he was forgiven at that moment. As we look on down the list, who was Jesus? Who was he talking to? As he said, Father, forgive them. I looked into the year of 2020 and I see us gathered in this parking lot tonight. Friend, I want to tell you, it's easy to point a finger at those that drove nails in his feet and his hands, but I want to let us know something tonight. It was your sin. It was my sin that nailed him to the cross. I'm so thankful that he offered us forgiveness. There was another prayer that was prayed. It wasn't prayed by Jesus. But I want you to listen closely. There was a thief on the left in rejection. But there was another male factor there on the right side. He simply said this. He said, Father, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. A simple cry to Jesus. A simple prayer. If you're watching, if you're listening by radio, I've got good news for you. A simple cry. A simple cry. A simple uh, uh, crying out to Jesus. He's there and He will save you. I want us to remember the prayers. Uh, the next thing I want us to remember tonight as I move on quickly, I want us to remember the price that He paid and the pain that He endured. You see, friends, tonight the reason we celebrate Good Friday is we can't afford to forget the price that was paid. We read the scripture a while ago. The prophet Isaiah had a revelation. He said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Don't forget the price that was paid. Don't forget the pain that he endured. You see, as we celebrate Good Friday, I can't help but remember the, those soldiers as they took that whip, that cat of nine tails, and they began to come across the back of, of Jesus. As they began to beat him, friend, I want you to understand, he took those stripes so you and I could experience healing. I said he did it so we could experience wholeness and wellness tonight. The next thing I see that they did, they took a crown of thorns. I've got a little replica here in my hand, but I can just imagine in mockery, in shame, as they took that crown and they placed it on the head 
of the Savior, the Redeemer of all mankind. I can just imagine what it must have been like as that blood began to flow down his face. Don't forget the price that was paid. And then they took a cross and then they placed it upon him. And they began to ridicule. And they began to lead him up to Calvary. Up to Golgotha. Friend, I want you to understand why did he do that? Please listen to me clearly tonight. He paid a debt that he did not owe. He went there in our stead. He paid the price so you and I, in the face of life's greatest challenges, in the face of the greatest problems that we could ever begin to imagine, sickness, disease, infirmity, pandemic, I'm telling you tonight, I have hope because of Jesus and His shed blood. On this Good Friday, we remember the prayers that he prayed. We remember the price that he paid and the pain that he endured. And I'll close in just a moment. But we also cannot forget the provision that he made. Salvation, full and free. The worst day of mankind became the best day. Because the cross built a bridge. I remind you tonight that there's coming a day just as he came he is coming again and the reason we can rejoice is because of the provision that was made salvation for our soul healing for our bodies you see hell at that moment as he was there on the cross as he hung his head as life left his body hell fought for a moment that they had won the devil thought that victory had been wrought. I love the way the late S.M. Lockridge, the former pastor of the Calvary Baptist Church in San Diego. I love the way he said it. Let me read it for you. Let me read it for you this evening. He said it like this. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is sleeping. Judas is betraying. But Sunday is coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday is coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary is crying. Peter is denying. But they don't understand that Sunday is coming. Hallelujah. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scarlet. They crown him with thorns, but they don't know that Sunday is coming. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood is dripping. His body is stumbling. And his spirit is burdened. But you see, it's only Friday. And Sunday is a coming. It's Friday. It seems like the world is winning. People are sinning. And evil is grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nail my Savior's hands to the cross. They nail my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raise him up next to criminals. You see, it's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday is coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that they're scheming. They has been achieving, but they don't know it's only Friday, but Sunday is a coming. Can somebody get a hold of some hope tonight and get a hold of some faith? It may be dark in your life. You may be going through the meal tonight, but I've got good news for you. I said Sunday is coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by the Father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday. But Sunday is coming. It's Friday. The earth trembles. The sky grows dark. My king yields his spirit. It's Friday. It seems that hope is lost. Uh, death has won. Sin has conquered. And Satan is judging. You see the good news is that it's only Friday. Can somebody help me out tonight? I said it's Friday. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross. He's feeling forsaken by his father. Left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday. 
But Sunday, Sunday is coming. Hallelujah. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard. And a rock is rolled into place. Hallelujah. Oh, it seems hopeless. It seems all in vain. It seems that death has won and sin has conquered and Satan's just a laughing. It's Friday he's buried. A soldier stands guard and a rock is rolled into place. But friends, I've got good news. It's only Friday. I said it's only Friday and Sunday is coming. I want to tell you tonight that Sunday is coming. I said Sunday is coming. There's coming a day. I'm telling you tonight, it may look bleak if we look at this world tonight and it seemed like that the enemy's got the upper hand, but I've got good news for the church of Jesus Christ. Sunday is on its way. Hallelujah. Sunday is coming. I want the musicians to come back tonight if they will. Please come. I've got good news for you. If you're listening tonight, if you're in this parking lot tonight and you don't know Jesus, you've not accepted Him, you've not surrendered your life to Him. Simple tonight. I said it's simple tonight. What do you need to do? Number one, we must admit that we're a sinner in need of a Savior. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, it says this, For all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. My prayer right now is that God will give revelation to people that are listening to this message. That they will understand that they are desperately in need of a Savior. I proclaim it again. America is in desperate need of Jesus Christ. I thank God for our legislators and our president and what they are doing to try to help but the help we need only comes from above. We've got to admit that we've done wrong. We've got to admit that the problem we have is too big and we can't fix it. We need a Savior. The second thing is very simple. We've got to believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sin and our shame. That he paid the ultimate price. Listen to me. Listen to me. And then we must confess that Jesus is Lord. We must confess. Please leave that on. Leave that, leave that recorder on. We've got to confess that Jesus is Lord. That he went to the cross. That he died and confessed. Why do we need to confess? Because Romans chapter 10 and 13 it says this. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Hallelujah. There's hope tonight. There's salvation tonight. Hallelujah. Whosoever shall call, verse 13, upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to ask you to pray with me on this Good Friday. Listen to me, friends. Good Friday 2020 could go down as your spiritual birthday. The day that you dedicated and surrendered your life to Jesus. I want us to pray it together. Father God, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I admit that I am hopeless within myself. I believe that you went to the cross. When you went to the cross, you took my shame. You took my sin. You took my sickness. You took everything. And it was nailed to the cross. And I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I confess that you are my Savior, that you are my Lord. I surrender my life to you, Jesus. I will serve you. I'll live for you. Hallelujah. Could we give God praise one more time tonight? Come on, let's give God praise all over this parking lot. Those that are watching at home, Father, I thank you for salvation. I thank you, Lord, that in spite of what goes on in this world, we know that you're coming again. And God, in the face of trouble, in the face of problems all around us, God, we don't want to forget the price that was paid. We don't want to forget the sacrifice that was made. We don't want to forget the provision that you provided. 
in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah could we worship together for just a minute come on let's give God praise for more as the worship team comes back joining with us tonight. If you have an offering, if you have tithe or offering you want to give, Max is right over there. We have something for all the kids. All the kids in attendance, if you want to just go and exit right out here at the South Parking Lot. On Sunday, they are forecasting rain. So our Easter parking lot service uh, is not going to happen. We invite you to join with us again on Facebook Live at 1045. Also, join with us on Hope 94.3 and we will worship and we will celebrate the Super Bowl of all Super Bowls. We will celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for being here. We love you so much. It's so good. It's so good just to see you. Just to look and, and know that you're there. We love you. If we can help you in any way, don't hesitate to call. God bless. Honk your horns with everybody. Yeah, honk. 